Welcome everyone to the Pokeballs podcast. This is episode seven, week seven. We are into, my name is Lee, one of your hosts, and I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Scott. How are you doing, mate? Hello, I am very good, Lee. Great to be here, great to see you. As I really like your uh, jumper, mate. It's nice. Thank you very much. I your have, sweat, sweater. I have matching socks <laughs> and trousers as well, so... I, uh, I'm a bit disappointed it's not a full suit. For those of you that are listening Ow. just on Spotify, it's like a, a pink tie-dye white kind of thing going on. Looks cool. It's nice, mate. It's nice. You doing all right, though? Thank you very much. Yeah, be good. Just been relaxing. Yeah. We've had another bank holiday over it's in the UK. so the <laughs> It's been the coronation <laughs> this weekend. The king. Did, did you watch any of it? Crowned. I didn't, mate. No. I'm not against the royals, but I'm, not just, I'm just not of that generation, you know? I think it's no. like... It's like some. I said this to Tasha. I was like, "It's something that my gran would sit and watch, and you know, we'd be we'd have a weekend with my parents, and my gran would be over, and she'd be sitting watching it, and my mum and dad probably be dipping in a little bit of it. And no disrespect from my end, but I would be paying very little attention to it because I've just got no interest in it. It's not that I dislike the royals or anything. Uh, I think it's cool that our country has them, but I'm not like invested at all in no, that sort yeah. of thing. So. Yeah, I don't know how how are you, mate. Are you pretty much the same. You know, yeah. I, I don't I don't really understand how people can be that invested in the world, but you know, as long as they're happy, that's the main yeah. thing. Like I think I think it is just like um, I've got a funny story though. It was really annoying, but like I think it's more of a, that generation, like that older generation, like you know, yeah, get get behind get behind them, yeah. Great, all think, all hail the king. My, my friend was saying, I think Stephen Fry said that. And if you look it up, it is also true. Uh, but like the happiest countries in, around the world are the ones that have monarchies, mm. um, which is a really interesting stat. And it that does it does match up. So yeah. But. So we w- we went yesterday um, to uh, yesterday morning. There's a a local uh, car boot. It's a huge car boot that they have. We haven't been for ages, so we thought we'd go down there yesterday morning. It was a nice morning, so we thought, yeah, we'll we'll go down. Uh, and on the way because we live like in the middle of the countryside. So there's lots of like awkward little country lane roads that we have to drive through to get to where we were going. And um, <laughs> we were going through this little village. It was so annoying, mate. We got stopped by a bunch of old boys who were all dressed up in like uh, up to the nines. So had all these like kind of replica royal outfits on and they stopped the car right and the road and we had to wait literally about 20 minutes for this replica king and queen like cart with these like wooden cut out horses and people (laughs) riding them with a kind of copy king and queen in this like carriage to come out on onto the road and then walk down through the village and they wouldn't let us pass them. So we had to wait for this fake procession to go through at like 9 a.m. in the morning before we were able to get through. It was like, come on. These, yeah, they were, they were, there was some dedication there. You can imagine the thoughts that were going through my head. So very angry not, thoughts going through your head. I was not, I was not, I was not happy. But anyway, yeah, nice to see that the traditions are being kept, though, I guess. Um, I've got something to show you later. In the episode, don't okay. forget. Okay, don't um, forget. but yeah, that that was that. So the bank holiday and everything. Hope everyone else has had a nice weekend. Of course, since last week, a big shout out to everyone for all the interactions on last week's video. Great to get those feedback, and we'll be adding a little section a bit later on to the podcast. So stay around for that one. But um, Pokemon news, Scott. There hasn't been a great deal again this week. It's been probably, I think, last week. In my opinion, was probably the quietest week we've had in Pokemon um, generally for a very long time. There hasn't been much going on. Scarlet and Violet has been very quiet. Of course, it was Golden Week in Japan, so it kind of makes sense, but there was very little going on. We've had tidbits from um, Pokemon Go. Obviously, the, the new Cleaver raid has just went live, so that's that's something. EX Masters as well has had a bunch of stuff going on, but outside of that, the main series games like Scarlet and Violet have had very little. The only thing to really talk about is the brand new raids, and it kind of follows on with our, our little theory that we, we kind of touched on last week. It does indeed, baby. It yeah. does indeed. So we had 
last night, the Intellion raid finished and we had the announcement of the brand new seven star raid that will be happening this week. And of course, it is that chestnut. We picked out last week, we said, based on our theory, there will be three Pokemon left before Pokemon Home arrives on the Switch compatibility with Scarlet and Violet. And it will be either Chestnut, Delphox or Rillaboom as the next raid. And it is that Chestnut, mate. So feels like that theory cheering up. No, we we'll have to. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we have to assume that it's <laughs> correct. Got lost for words. No, no, because no, <laughs> like, we got well, something you, right. <laughs> you summed it up. You summed it up basically. So, um, yeah, no, we we'll just have to assume that we're correct for now and hope that the next one follows the pattern. Yeah, I tell you what. Just to add to this as well, just to go a little bit more in depth, a good friend of mine, Light, over on Twitter, also has a, a YouTube channel. He's a, a theory analyst and does an amazing job as well with this. But he posted this tweet back in April, like uh, the 16th of April. He posted this with his prediction about how the the raids, the next raid, seven star raids, were going, and he predicted the Rillaboom the Chestnut and the Delphox. He has got a question mark here because he, he does, I think, based on this, I think there'll be another one following that as well, which is quite interesting. But he has the typings here. This is from the 16th of April, so quite a while ago. And he has that rock type on Chestnut. He has the normal type on Rillaboom. He's convinced that it will be normal type and it will because it'll take advantage of the, the Boom Burst um move on that which will be quite scary actually with the terror boost on top of it and then a fairy type delphox which makes quite a lot of sense for the move set that it's got so be interesting to see if they are the next two i know that's what we've been talking about but if they the terror typings are tied to the same as well but uh, i just wanted to kind of bring that up today because i think light will be a good person to get on maybe in a couple of weeks as a guest to talk about some of uh, the theories going into the new dale season what we potentially might see going forward with those but things looking hopeful for pokemon home of course mate it's um it's all ramping up now, of course. We are still without any official update for when it will be coming to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Um, but we have had our resident um, leak, leaker to Scarlet and Violet. I don't know if you've heard of Riddler Koo before, but he is a very reliable source. Um, and I've got some interesting things. I could say in future episodes about Koo and uh, conversations I've had with officials at Pokemon as well. So maybe we'll get into that at some point. But he kind of came out earlier in the week saying with this hinting, time to go back to home, guys, with the, the start of Pokemon there. He had some Zs and then a little kiss, obviously. Followed it up with 19. Um, so whether or not he means the 19th of May, I think it possibly could mean the 19th of June because then it would fall perfectly for the week after that final seven star terror raid event based on our theory would be in that week of the 19th of june so that would make a lot of sense and then followed it up with this picture which in my mind is like a, a pokeball transporter for when you're trading yeah. pokemon right instantly thought of that and then this came out yesterday it can evolve after depositing which is he's um he start a pokemon wants to register them in home i think that's all it means and then you'll be able to evolve them after to get a living dex in in pokemon home and you know scarlet and violet so they are interesting kind of tweets that have come out on the back of it as well so it feels like we're getting ever closer to some sort of official announcement from pokemon hopefully soon, maybe even this week, about when to expect it in Scarlet and Violet. It does feel like it's getting ever closer now. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. I think I think our theory is pretty sound, to be honest. It makes sense. Although, I was just thinking, um, based on our theory, what Pokemon were left? It was Delphox, Rillaboom, Chestnut, and what was the last one? That was it, mate. There was only three. And our, from what we talked about last week, there was Delphox, there was Chestnut. That'll finish Gen 6 as that kind of light little section. And then the only one from Gen 9, yeah, sorry, Gen 8 is the Rillaboom because we've had the Inteleon, which finished last night as a recording this video. And we've already had the Cinderace. So that would complete all of the starter sets. The only so thing far. I would say is mm. that it would be a bit weird for them to do the same Gen back to back because they're not going to do. Two grass, are they? I'm not gonna go rid of them next. In the next no, week. that's why. That's why I so, think we'll have Delphox next. But yeah, but then it's the same gen, right? As Chestnut. Yeah, but they but they haven't uh, done that before, have they? Have they? 
No, they have. Although, if they kind of have, if you're taking the the Legends Arceus um, starting yeah. career, because then they did they did Decidueye and Typhlosion back to back, so they could do it like that, because they did the Grass starter and then the Fire starter, right? So that was Decidueye then Typhlosion back to back. That oh, makes sense. So they could do the same here with the Chestnut Grass starter and then the Del Fox a Fire starter and then finish everything off with the Rillaboom to kind of end this first cycle of seven star terrorids, which in my opinion is what they're doing no. before they move into the second cycle. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? You just have to be patient as with, <laughs> as with a lot of things. Yeah. We just have to wait until the 19th. I, I'm with you. I don't think it's going to be this week. It'll be next. This, this, what's the day today? It will be a week on, yeah, it'll be next week. it'll be week a week on, on Friday. Yeah. I don't think potentially so. be it, you know, I don't know though. I can't see it. I can't see them doing it on the nineteenth of May. I feel like the nineteenth of June makes a bit more sense because that is a Monday, and that's when the terror raid would end for Rillaboom, I think, and that would be normally the announcement of the next seven star terror raid event yep. that Monday, the nineteenth. So that feels a bit more in line yep. with, with with how it would go. But we'll have to wait and see, like you say. Pitch patience is a virtue. Um, but yeah, that's that, mate. And then the other thing to mention in anything that's been going on, Scarlet and Violet, is you can now, if you took part in the Global Challenge 3 over this past weekend, uh, took part in three battles, of course, you can get yourself a code in Pokemon Home for the new Ultra Ball bag, which is exclusive for taking part in that event. And um, you can get yourself that nice backpack to add to your character. But other than that mate there is not really much going on there's been no mystery gifts announced so i'd expect we'll get some mystery gifts this week um so annoying all... what like, is just this like this lull period like i, I find like it just teasing us yeah uh, like because we know it's just like as we mentioned before it's just going to be everything at once right we're going to get home and then they'll probably just randomly drop some trailers for the DLC or something like that, like after mm. that as well. Yeah. I feel like they just want to get home out of the way. And that's probably why yeah. they haven't done any trailers or anything or teased the DLC really. Mm. And so I think once home is out of the way, they can just focus on everything else. They're probably just making sure that home works, testing it and yeah. testing it and testing it. Because, you know, they won't really want to release it and it doesn't work. So many people will be angry. I mean, people are already oh angry. Oh, my God. Yeah. It will be they can't have angry. a repeat of that last, nah. like that 1.2 update. Definitely nah. not. I think as well, a big part of me that thinks we might not get anything this week as well is because um, Tears of the Kingdom's out on Friday. And do they want to have any sort of conflict with that release? You know, let that. I mean, you know, the chestnut events go on live, but that that that's already they they do every Friday, so it's maybe not that's really part of it, you know. Because there's been this build up of Tears of the Kingdom. Maybe they said was said to Pokemon, you know, we're not gonna don't do anything, yeah, raise it maybe. until Tears of the Kingdom's out. That would yeah. make a lot of sense. And then the following week, at the back end of the following week, drop something about Pokemon, maybe. Yeah, and then I guess if it is the 19th of June, it leaves a lot of time for people to get Tears of the Kingdom, play that, and then you know they're kind of. I guess I at that should point, have died you, down a bit. Yeah, right you're then. a month into playing through the game, then yeah, the hype's died down a bit. But um, yeah, will you be playing Tears of the Kingdom, mate? No, no, I'm not really much of a. I'm not really a gamer, to be honest. I am a gamer, but. I just I like playing games on the social gamer is the best way to describe it. I very mm. rarely I do play games by myself. I only really play Apex, but even then I do it to complete challenges. Like I won't sit there religiously and play it constantly because most of the time my friends don't want to play it, so it's just me on my own. Um, so probably not. I tried to play. I say I tried to play. Um, I started to play uh, Breath of the Wild um, last year, but it's not really yeah. for me. I find role play games apart from Pokemon. Um, I just don't really enjoy them. I mean, some oh, Pokemon games, I don't normally enjoy the story, to be honest with you. I mm. just complete it so that we can play competitive Pokemon, really. Yeah. So, That's fair enough. Yeah. I get why yeah. people like it. Um, it does look really good. It does really look, from what I've seen, it looks amazing, but, you know, yeah. we'll have to wait and see. I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, um, I hope it's, I think it will be, the story will be good. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm weird because I got, 
it's when I bought my Switch, I bought the very first uh, edition of the Switch when it first came out, and my uh, bundle was with Breath of the Wild. But I think it took me about two years for me to actually play Breath of the Wild, to actually put it in the console and load it up. Because I was like, I know when I'm going to do this, it's like that I want some time to be able to like yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like really concentrate on it. And obviously doing competitive Pokemon, other things with the channel, I just never really had the time to kind of set aside to do it. I'm pleased I did though, and I got around to it and I finished it, which was really good. But um, I don't know whether it'll be the same case with Tears of the Kingdom. Like I'm not in any mad rush to feel like I want to play it. So it'll probably be one of those things I might, I don't know, see how much, what I've got going on on Friday. Yeah. So, yeah. But it will be good, I'm sure. But yeah. Have you got anything from Reddit this week then, mate? Your daily content from Reddit that you want to share with us? Be interesting uh, to hear anything. I've only got two things. Two one things of this week. One, one of them is really sad. Not really Scott's sad. Goody bag. <laughs> we're just calling it that now, aren't we? Um, I think so. I like that. I like the name. Everyone, let us know if you want to. If we should keep the name Scott's Goody Bag, I feel like it's a good name. I mean, I think it's a good good name. Right, Scott's I'm telling magic you, hat. A link now. I mean, this this article is kind of you would expect it at the moment. Mm. <laughs> I'll just send you it on Twitter if you want to open up. No, I won't do. I won't spoil it. I won't spoil the title for the. Uh, Boom, boom. There was first some further news on the uh, Pokemon TCG as well this week uh, about the um, the buying of uh, cards and stuff like that for adults. Oh. We can talk in that in a minute as well. So what is this? Pokemon Gold monthly earnings reportedly plummeted to their lowest in five years. I wonder why. Oh, wonder no. Why. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, interesting to see yeah. that... Um, not that they, they got their comeuppance, but it's obviously the stuff that's been going on is affecting the revenue now, which is pretty crazy. Maybe that's what they need to happen for them to kind of sit up and be like, oh, we've made a big Money talks, baby. Money talks. Uh, 100%. It's like the one thing these companies will always, you know, take action about. It'd so, be good because I think, I guess, I, the, the community would feel like they've actually achieved something then because it's very easy to be like, oh, don't buy this, don't buy that, when a lot of the time people are going to buy stuff anyway, but they clearly haven't, so, which is yeah. awesome. So That's amazing, actually, yeah, like hats off to the community for like actually going through with it because like you say, a lot of the time when you feel strongly about something and you're personally sitting there saying, I'm not going to invest in this because I, I don't agree with it, I want something to change, but then, the, you know, the the kind of casual fans or fans that aren't really in the know about what's going on. I just want to play whatever it is, kind of just go ahead and buy it anyway. Then these companies are like, well, it's fine. We're still, we're still making coin. So we don't need to do really too much about it. So yeah, it is nice. The article goes on. Uh, that's according to data from App Store Analytics firm App Magic, reported by mobile. Sorry, they make is. a monthly revenue of like, in the tens of millions. Oh my god. That's insane, isn't it? That's Which insane money. Yeah. yeah. Suggests that Niantic's game saw monthly revenue of $34.7 million in April, making its 12th highest growth grossing mobile game worldwide. Uh, while this appears positive, however, the site notes that this share drop compared to March is 42.8 million revenue, which itself was a notable dip compared to the 57.9 million made in February. Jesus That's Christ. insane. So it's hard. That is, that is crazy. Hard. Last year, the game grossed 703 million in total, Jesus averaging Christ. a 58 million per month. So April's figures are well below average. Indeed, according to the report, 34.7 million figure is the game's last monthly revenue since February 2018. Damn. That's insane. That is absolutely, that's disgusting amounts of money. Monthly, 58 million normally a month. You can't live off that. No, no. Nah, I mean, what, what can you do with that? Nothing. Flit it away on a few. Buy, few buy like 100 things. houses, you know. <laughs> Stupid. Silly, mate absolutely Crazy. brutal but i'm glad i'm glad that they're getting 
this has shown because, like you said, money will talk, and hopefully they'll be like, maybe we should do something about this. Mm. You know, yeah. so we'll see. We'll see. Maybe, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Like I say, well, they're yet to kind of say anything other than mock the community. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, again, it's another waiting game, really. What they're going to do. Hopefully, it would be amazing to see a drop next month as well, especially after the announcement of Goldfest, you know, where they're expecting, oh no, revenue is going to go up now because of Goldfest. But if it dropped or stayed like around the same figure this next month, I think that's a real kind of intent from the community. Be like, no, sort it out, sort oh, it my, out. I'd love to see it. Yeah. I'm not doing anything on it at the minute. I haven't even, I really want the cleaver, but I'm like, nah. Boycotting in my own way to support the gold community. Look at you. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, man. That's good. <laughs> no, no, I, I feel like it. I, I wish I could I do more, do but I, I feel I feel super powerless. You haven't done it for that. I mean, that's that's basically what you can do. Right? You know? Not play the game. That's the but best like, thing you I can mean, do. Yeah. Not and I do spend I do spend money on it because I have like no storage and. I'm too lazy to go through and release Pokemon and I need like incubators and other things. So I do spend money and I haven't for a, a long time. So yeah. I literally There's haven't touched a game since like the week that summer that it just went boom. Um that was it. What, 2016 was that? Yeah. I had literally wow. I've had it on my phone. Just yeah. haven't played it at all. I'm still I'm I'm genuinely amazed that it's I mean I guess it's Pokemon. Pokemon they they know how to keep you keep you interested but yeah. um do you never do you never get it um out to play at the like the european championships or uh, worlds or anything oh man the 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 stuff that they have for go at those events is insane it's really cool like the raids and stuff they have i get it um, but i never I mean, really have much time to to do much because of the casting at those events so it's like give me give your phone to me man i'll be i should be yeah in those stops yeah i don't know it's just to me, because I'm not stupid, but my brain's like, is there an inherent value to me with a lot of things? It has to be worthwhile. And, you know... I competitive d- go, baby. Yeah, but I'm not interested that. in play competitive go. And or <laughs> Although I did learn recently that, again, just goes to show when you don't... Because I've, I've never, ever used home before. I've also, I don't know how, it, like, I mean, obviously, I get simple to use. Right? I know the basics of it, but I've never actually used it myself. I didn't even know you could port Pokemon from home to, not home, sorry, go to your Switch games. Yeah, it's very cool. It's like, I, I, very got, cool. Um, I don't know if you ever saw, and through Players Cup, uh, there was, I think the, the team was me, Lou, Aaron, and Sierra, and we did... Um, caster battles in that and I played Lou and our format for one of the matches was mythical Pokemon mm-hmm. and uh, it was I weird both of us uh, came up with a very similar like Mel Metal team and uh-huh. the Mel Metal the only way to get it was through so trading it in Go so that's yeah. how I got mine which was which was pretty awesome uh, how is yeah, it really cool Shani's feature. in Go? Um, when they've got like the is it like, like a spotlight hour and things like that where it's like concentrated um like pokemon spawns. so you get loads yeah, of spawns yeah, yeah. of the same pokemon it's pretty easy to get like uh there was one of the last ones i did there's been so many since but because obviously i've moved recently and i don't have access to as much of it uh was the teddy Urso one and i think i got like three shiny teddy Ursas in oh, the wow. space of like half an hour mate it was nuts they're so good they are so good. Like if you put the time in to getting them. I mean, I was probably lucky, but I mean, I did a, a is it Rog and Roller? Uh, the Gigalith Prevolution? Yes. Uh, I did that and I got like, oh dude, I don't know how many shinies I got. It was like, they were just like all spawning shinies. I got like seven or eight, I think, in that oh, event. It was n- absolutely nuts. But then I, I managed to evolve my Teddy Ursa into an Ursulana. So I've got a shiny Ursulana in Pokemon Go. So I will trade that to Excellent. Scarlet and Violet yeah, when we get there. When we can, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that one. That'd be good. Yeah, it's a really cool feature. I like it. No, but no. Of it's... course, we don't have it with Scarlet and Violet yet because reasons. That's not, good. That's not true, reasons. everyone, shall we? Reasons. But Trigger. What were you going to say anyway. about... You want to say something when I brung that article up about Go? Or was that what you were going to say? Maybe that was what I was going to say. Did you see the... Um, this is a really random tangent, but it's just <laughs> come to my head because you mentioned Sierra. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the other 
commentator. Uh, Ross. American. Not, no, the, the guy, not Adam. Um, what's the other guy? No, for VGC. Big guy, big tall guy. Joe. Yeah, Joe. Yeah. So yeah. they were on the, the they were on the desk. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know. If, I don't even think most people like picked it up. But two guys were playing on stream that were roommates. And um, have you ever seen the vine where the lady walks past and she goes, and they were roommates. They basically just they they did no, that on stream. It. it was quite funny. <laughs> no, did they? They clipped it and was like, oh my god, they they referenced the vine on stream. I was like, ah, that's cool. That's funny because I've seen that reference. But Joe's like, really good at doing stuff like that. Like, it, yeah, it was. So did you funny. see when they were in? Um, the, I think it was a, a California regional they were in, and at the end, his sign off was "Stay Classy, California" or something like that. <laughs> it was like really cool, like the reference to Anchorman. Yeah, because uh, he was oh, the horse that weekend on the couch. I love Anchorman. It's, really cool. it's one of my favourite films. Me too, man. man. It's good. It's so funny. <laughs> I'm in a box of emotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Very cool. Are you an Adam Sandler fan? Just by interest. Me and Tash were having this conversation the other night. Yeah, I don't, there are a lot of people out there. Oh, they hate I, him. I didn't realise how much he's disliked. I am a huge... I don't no, so fan. He does some very funny movies. I mean, I'm very much a comedy guy. Like, mm, I don't really too. like a lot of de- depressing stuff. I don't like a lot of nah. like slow, sad music. I like yeah. don't like watching scary films or dramas or anything like that. I just prefer things that make me laugh. And mm. a lot of the films that I've that I love the comedies, you know, he's in and it's hilarious. There's like a big group of them that are like from that era of like the 90s, 2000s, early 2000s. I mean, Grown Ups is a great film. Oh, so such good. a good film. Such and even Grown Ups 2 is amazing as well. Yeah. So it's just Brilliant. like, I think Have you ever seen yeah. Anger Management? It's got Jack Nicholson in. Uh, let me have a quick look. See if I can. Oh, it's, it's like one of my all time favorite Sandler films. And I love anything with Kevin Hart in as well. Kevin Hart is just hilarious. I don't think so, I have. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll watch it. Such a tangent for the podcast. So oh. let us know your favorite genre of film and if you like Adam Sandler or not. I would love to know. I want to know more about this. This like, it's widespread hate for Sandler. I don't know why. I think it's just, I don't know. It's, it's popular, got, right? People hate people that, yeah. I think he's probably had that boom, right? Whereas in every movie. And so I think people think that he's not a great actor because he only does comedies, but you know, he's made a, insanely good living so good yeah. luck to him like who cares yeah, yeah. You know? I like him so. he doesn't hasn't done anything bad as far as I'm aware so no he's not a funny guy no more power to you Adam come on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> you I'm, might have kids that like I found one, out the other so. day right I just yeah. so many things have been like you know when like worlds collide I sent you the thing the other day where the, these two female K-pop idols that I love were watching the Palace mm. game and I was like freaking out. I was like, yeah. what? It's on their Instagram story. And then another thing that I found out is that one of one of the girls from the same group also really likes Pokemon. And like all she's been posting on her Instagram was like Pokemon stuff. And I was like, come on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak Korean, but come on anyway. We will try. We will try. I will try my best. I can say hello. Yeah. My name is Scott. That will do. And yes and no. So we can just ask yes and no questions and then we'll be good. But, uh, that be, no. Yeah, that would be that would be good, mate. Another it's thing weird, before I forget. It? Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to show you quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be back. Okay. Let's wait patiently. For those of you on Spotify, obviously, you don't have the visuals. So I am trying to keep in mind when we go through these podcasts to give you an update, a, a description as best I can. Scott just disappeared. He's went to get something and he's about to show us. So, so remember the Miriam card that I, I got a couple, well, a couple episodes back at EUIC? Yeah. Well, um, I mentioned to you that there's this really cool guy called Canto Forge on Etsy. Um, been on the subreddit loads that's how he's, he's kind of i found out about him does these really cool like designs for uh cards like custom cards like all like the chase cards basically and um i bought one of their frames and i just wanted to show you that i'll put it in the frame and that it looks um it looks Look. oh, so glary stupid, stupid sun so glary. oh what's the th- hang on you can't do it. the light down we'll be we'll be get the you light see off. that it's, it's, uh, oh it looks so I, nice it I'm just trying to 
Have you got a There's picture me. of it like online that you can send me so I can pull it up digitally? It's basically for everyone that isn't watching the visual. It's a, an extension of the card. So the, the the frame has more of the card going into it. It's a really nice kind of display piece. It looks really cool. I'll oh, see if I'll Scott's got you uh, right now. a digital image because we can't uh, show you because of the lighting of his, uh, his room at the minute. It's too, it's too shiny, bit. that's why. Yeah, um, too shiny. That's a- it's too, powerful. <laughs> it's too powerful. It's just too powerful. I mean, it's actually no, it, really looks, nice. it looks really nice from what I saw of it. I've seen the uh, the digital copy of it, which is which is really cool. So oh, I sent it to you now on Twitter. It's, uh, it's cool that we have people in the community that like do stuff like this, isn't it? You Honestly, know? it's wicked. Um, it's awesome. I just need to get like a stand to stand it up because I'm yeah. like. I've got my shelf, but all my PSA cards, they have PSA stands. And I was like, ah, mm. oh, I need something to stand this up with. But um, I just sent it on Twitter. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at this. This is beautiful. Look it at that. Is, uh, it's yeah, that is so nice, isn't it? Yeah. I love that so much. And it's such a nice alternative to actually just getting it graded. Well, yeah, that's what yeah. I like, right? Because yeah. I have a lot of cards that I want to keep, but like... Okay, so the option really to display them, like, because I'm, I'm like, I don't want them to be in a binder, right? The yeah. best option is you either put them in one of those, um, either a top loader and try and display it, or you mm. can get those like fancy top loaders that kind of look a lot nicer, or you get it graded, right? And I'm like, I can't be bothered. So this is like a really nice alternative to getting How much it graded. Was that? 22 quid, free postage. Oh, that's, that's great. Um, and they yeah. just send you it so you don't even need to send your card away or anything no, like that they just send it to you it was a bit finicky to put together but no it's yeah it's quality <sighs> I might do that with some of mine you know because I, I've i got a, a pile that are ready to go off to PSA and I'm just like I don't really want to send them away after the last time I I submitted them and it was like over two and a half years to get them back and Man, that, kind is, of put, that is brutal put me off and I've used ace grading and they're all right but I'm just like I kind of like to keep everything the same do you know what I mean mm-hmm. like I want if I get them graded I want them graded with PSA but I'm kind of like just past the point where I might I might give them a try mate if I get anything done I'll share them on the pod um you said you had a couple of things from reddit so do you have another uh, Scott's goodie bag for us or not come on don't the, leave only, us the, hanging, the, only, the only other one was Go on it's a bit brutal to be honest but Ooh. um, Ooh. Spicy. Been locked. um Spicy. but basically some guy had his had an argument with his missus and um I thought you were gonna talk about the argument that um we had before we <laughs> came on the pod. Uh, we'll I, got, I got a bit aggro about the Newcastle game. You got yes, very aggro. Scott's brother is an Arsenal fan, so there is bias <laughs> there. It's, although he said there's no bias, although we 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 we've brushed it under the no road, reason mate. to hate Newcastle, and, uh, my dude. Public apology for my aggression. <laughs> I wasn't that aggressive. <laughs> Screaming at Oh, so scared, honestly. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at this. What is it, mate? I'm gonna let you take take the lead on this. This looks quite It's not a lot uh, to say to be honest. It's just it's just pretty brutal. They had an argument and she ripped off his Pokemon oh. cards and I was like, fuck. <laughs> 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 Could you imagine? Like I can't I can't see, I mean, maybe there are some really expensive ones in there, but to go through the effort as well, to because they've been ripped, they haven't been cut as well. Didn't, so she had to individually, she had to individually cut, like rip all the cards. There are loads of cards there, right? Yeah. So you got, they must have, she must have been pretty peed in order to do that, that what many. But do? I was like, it doesn't explain. Well, they had an argument about money, apparently, and then this is what she did. Why is the sunglasses just randomly like, <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe it was a sunny day this must like, be the box where, where the off. cards were I yeah guess. I can't see any hollows in there I guess the Mew promos you don't know what I think that one underneath looks like another Mew promo yeah but imagine if it was like oh brutal mm. if they were like really expensive cards or like she ripped over a, a PSA a PSA case or something oh, oh you'd want to cry wouldn't yeah, you yeah smashed it with a hammer or something oh Congrats, they're not fake. Yeah, they didn't look fake by the rips in them because you can tell when they're ripped. Like, they do look, yeah, they're genuine. I mean, it doesn't look like, it's It's not really about the, the, the cost of them, right? It's more no, the principle. No, no, of course, no. It's a good statement, but like you say, you must have done something pretty bad. I mean, do you deserve that? I mean, no one deserves that, right? But what, what was the context of this 
this end result what what led yeah. to this decision being made from this this heartbroken girl she might not have been she might just been really pissed you know i don't know who knows i tell you what you know the car boot i was talking about earlier that took me like an hour to get there because Mate, of some elderly if, people doing the I used reenactment to, uh, of the king and queen. Scar boots to try and get pokemon cards but they're so hard to find cheap Mate, cards because people know now there was a guy there and they weren't cheap, but they were reasonably pli- priced. He had a great store because the thing that I was looking out for when I was there was a GBA. I want another GBA. Um, so I was looking out for one. And this guy had a great stall. He had like loads of like retro console stuff. He had like snares, snares. He had um, he had loads of DS games. He had a uh, Dreamcast, uh, a bunch of N64 games. He had like Banjo Kazooie. He had like Banjo Tooie. He had loads of really cool stuff. And he also had some Pokemon cards at the end. So I was like, I went down. And I was having a look because it was a, a base set folder. There was a few hollows in there, like your kind of more common ones, like uh, Hitmonchan, uh, Clefairy, some other ones in there, but like pristine condition, mate, pristine. And I was just looking through, I was like, this is really cool. And he's, I said, can I take, because I need Eradicate for my base set, um, uh-huh. my, my, my collection, because I'm missing Eradicate and I'm missing uh, Doug Trio. They're the two that I kind of need to get to kind of, finish off the the set and i've been putting off getting them on ebay because i've been like i don't really want to pay like 20 quid for eradicate and that is pretty banged up so like if i'm going to pay like a premium for it i want it to be in in good nick so it's like can i take the the eradicate out just to have a look at the back of it have a look at the condition and he's like you collect it and i was like yeah 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 um he was like wait there he's like just help yourself take it out yeah have a look at it and uh, i've got another folder if you'd like to have a look at it and he bust out this folder from his van dude and it was like honestly mate there was nothing in there that was like a uh, first edition charizard or anything like that but the one of the coolest collections i've seen in person probably ever really for like the longest time and it was like he had all of the hollow set from team rock uh, Team Rocket returns, so the, all the EX, the Delta species cards and stuff like that. Um, and what else did he have? There was another set in there, Fossil as well. He had all the hollows from there, uh, and not the the um, the Dark Charizard, but everything else. And mate, there was only oh, had loads of level X hollows as well, which Ooh. was so cool, mate. And they yeah. were so clean, and they weren't badly priced at all. They were like ranging between like um like mid like 15 quid up to like i think the most expensive one i saw was like 40 quid for these hollows and i mean they were immaculate and he was saying to me he's like yeah collect them these are all like replicas from the sets that i've got complete in binders but he said yeah these are all just straight out of the pack into the the uh, into a, a penny sleeve and then into the the binder yeah, yeah yeah i was like you just don't see them in that condition anymore. But he didn't take cards, so I was like, I can't. I've got like, I don't really. I should have carried cash because it was a card yeah, boot sale, right? Yeah. But I wasn't really going there to buy much, so I didn't have any. And I was like, I'm really sorry. Can I just take the radicate, which I got for two quid? So I was like, pretty chuffed about that. So that was nice. Good. Oh, See that that what you mentioned there about eBay is it? Mm. I really, really like. I've heard so many horror stories from like people who just like where they've posted them it really puts me off buying cards from ebay like mm. i just i've seen things on the public i think as a seller though you're in a better position if you're um sorry as a buyer you'll always get sided with if you're the seller you're pretty screwed mate i've had some horrendous situations it's what i don't understand stuff. that really annoys me is that they they always take your they they even when like you're in the right. They almost always take the seller's sign. It really yeah. pees me off. It's it like they, they will find every angle available to try and make sure that the seller is right and you're mm. not so seller, the buyer is right, sorry, and the seller is wrong, even if yeah. you are technically right. That's what really annoys me. And I, when I sold, I had the Coridon card, right? That I pulled with this. And yeah. I sold that at the same time as I, when I tried to list this. Um, touch wood. I haven't had any complaints about that, but I sent it properly I put it in a top loader I put two bits of cardboard either side I taped all around the edge I put it in 
in an envelope, sealed it all up properly, and I did first class signed for as well. So I was like, there ain't no way, you're, mate. This- you're 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 safe, mate. I think. Yeah. I think for the general. I think the general consensus is the the majority of people that are buying off eBay are genuine people, you know. And I think like you just get it's like just everything. the odd one that spoils it. I had a everyone. horrible situation a few years ago where I had um, a Luga GX, the the full art that had a tiny bit of whitening, which is kind of natural from like um, Lost Thunder sets where the, the quality of the cards isn't that great. And I was like, I don't really want to send this one off to get graded, so I'll sell this one um, and I'll put that money towards getting a better copy of it. And uh, I was I was fully transparent with the photos. I took extra close-ups of the whitening around the edge uh, of the top corner. So people knew, and it was in the description, knew what they were buying. It wasn't um, best condition, but a cool card nonetheless. Like if you just look at the front of it, it looked amazing. And I sold it for like £30. So it was a little bit under market value at the time, but I didn't mind. I was like, that's 30 quid that I can put towards getting a better one. Exactly. Um, and I sent it off, but I stupidly made the mistake of not sending it recorded. And I had this horrible feeling after I realized, like, I normally send everything recorded delivery. So it's always tracked. And I didn't send this one. And yeah, lo and behold, like a week later, of course, and the person, they might have been genuine, but I feel like it was definitely not genuine at all because of the way they were very, they were so aggro as well with me about it, like so defensive. And I was just like, you've definitely yeah, got normally- the card. You've definitely got because I sent out a batch of others at the same time that, yeah, that, that was it. I sent out a, a batch of them. I think there was about nine I sent out at the same time. All of them except that one were recorded delivery. And that was the only one that didn't arrive. And yeah, eBay just didn't even want to know. I was like, I have sent it. It's on my receipt. I've paid for the postage. But they were like, nah, the person hasn't got it. They got the money back. I I had to refund them. And I was like, well, I'm down a card and down 30 quid. And I was just like, fair enough if they got it. But I just didn't get that vibe that they got it. And it's just funny that all these other ones were sent out at the same time. And every single person didn't have a problem. It's just that one. It's funny that you mentioned about him being aggro because I've ordered things before that haven't turned up. Mm. And I think most same people are like really polite about it. Like I was saying yeah. it didn't turn up and I was like, look, Hey, just so that you know, hasn't turned up for a while. I'm not angry, but maybe there's a problem with like delivery. Yeah. Or whatever. You check your end. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, when that Aggie definitely probably tried to mug it. Mate, yeah. So. I think I could definitely got mugged off mate. But yeah, that's the not sort it. of thing that puts me off. Yeah, mate, I don't yeah. blame you. Yeah. And I did keep an eye on their eBay after that for a while, just see to be like, up. yeah, see if they posted it. But uh, I kind of lost interest, so who knows on that mm. one. But they got a free Luger card out of it. Never mind. They might have needed it, but still not not the cool thing to do. Um, okay, so that was Scott's goodie bag, Scott's corner, whatever we're coining it. If you've got any ideas for names, obviously drop them in the comments and we'll uh, we'll christen this little section of Scott's little segments from Reddit, which are very entertaining uh, for future episodes. But mate, my little segment that I wanted to add for this week, I've been going through all the comments from last week's episode and we had quite a few interesting ones, mate. Um, I just wanted to kind of touch on it. Obviously last week we kind of concentrated a lot on um, them re-releasing the Game Boy Advanced um, and having all those and re-releasing the, the classic royalties, collection. Please. Yeah, the uh, the legacy workers. collection that someone coined it. I think that was probably the best coined phrase from last week's comment. Yep. The legacy collection. And I really liked reading through them. I think it was taken pretty much on the consensus everyone would be down for this. Except um, Nelson, who was, uh, I think, really burnt by Diamond and Pearl. Um, he said... It, it was along the lines of um, making a good point about letting the old games stay in the past. And he used Diamond and Pearl remakes as an example of why this should be a thing. These wouldn't and I be totally remake, get that. There was, these um, wouldn't be a remake. That's not what we're No, they wouldn't for. be. We were asking for like complete replicas the original the original games. The originals, yeah. Uh, Glimroth goes on to say, uh, save data stored on batteries makes um, it a bit difficult if they're doing it like the original ones. But I I think this would be something where they could just update the cartridges 
So they're like flash yeah. saves. They're not on like a battery. Or oh, they console. save directly to the console now. Or even better, just give us a Pokemon cloud save storage so we can do it that way. So I think he makes a good point though. But there's room there. Uh, Professor Oak was mentioning as well about the the side games, the quests, mini games, and the battle tower that we got in those old games that we just don't see anymore. That yep. ha- like you know, if we got those back as well, then it gives us a chance to. I think that's a war a really valid point to why the old games are still valuable at this day and age because they have aspects to the game that they just don't put into these new games anymore. That like are f- huge fan favorites, and I think like if we could go back and play them and they've still got value because you can trade those Pokemon in from these old games into home, into your new game. It's kind of cool. And to have those other aspects as well. Yeah. No, we are on the money. Just do it. Pokemon basically. Let's do it. Please do it. I'll go through the other comments if you want. We no, have there's a, some a really nice good one ones. From, I uh, love reading the AKA comments. Ice-T. Uh, rather have Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire on the Switch, which would be very cool. Full 3DS virtual console. That would be amazing. I would, I would, yeah, just take take my money for that for those. Uh, Better Crest uh, physical releases on the Switch console, which I thought was really interesting. So rather than get them a re-released on like a Game Boy, a re-release Game Boy with a re-release cartridge, just modern day ones, they release they would, it. They would have to make the, them cool though. It'd yeah, but to... you just release, like, in my mind, this works because you just release one cartridge, right? As a legacy collection, you have one cartridge legacy collection with red, oh, blue, yellow sick. on. And that's your cartridge, and it's got red, blue, and yellow on, and you can slot it in, and you can play e- any one of those three. And then you get legacy collection two, which has got gold, silver, crystal. And then you get legend. And, and the money they're going to make from that, if they're Switch games as well, and then they don't need to be integrated onto the virtual console at all. Mm-hmm. They don't need to have... And then they could maybe integrate some way to have compatibility between Pokemon Stadium 1, Pokemon Stadium 2. Maybe, I'm just saying. Be so good, though. That's a good idea. It's so excellent good. idea. So I really like that. But uh, thank you again to everyone that did comment on last week's video. Uh, do leave your comments down below about anything we cover this week or anything you'd like to give us a shout out for next week. And I'll make sure in this mailbag section of the podcast that I do read each and every one of them out. I do appreciate all of them. Um, the next thing that I did want to mention off the back of that, mate, and sorry, I'm talking a lot in today's episode. Go for it. I'm enjoying off the back myself. of that conversation last week, I did a bit of digging about potentially things that we could see. And one of them is this really interesting console from Analog, which is the Analog Pocket. I don't know if you've heard of this before. Yeah. I have. I've seen a lot have of those much of, similar oh, things. Mate, mate They're really it cool. looks I really want I really want one. It's it's not emulation as well so it's using the actual kind of functionality of the old uh, consoles to boot into the games. So a lot of the replica kind of handheld devices that you get now emulate they rip the rom and then they just emulate the games from the cartridge rather than actually playing the cartridge like the old consoles do. This is amazing. This does all of that backwards compatible with the GBA, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Original. You can also get adapters so you can play like um, Game Gear games on it, Lynx. Um, and there's another one as well. But I mean, this thing looks amazing. And the screen looks cool. It's got a lot of different um, display options. So you can play like classic screen, you can play colored screen. Um, yeah. I don't, oh. Yeah, there's the there's the, the Game Gear Neo Pocket and uh, the Atari Lynx as well. They're the, the extensions that you get. They all go into the back. That's wicked. And it's, you can use it as a MIDI controller as well, which I thought That's, that's so cool. sick. Yeah, like I would definitely do that, some music generation and stuff like that. But the big thing about it that I really loved is it's got this dock that you can dock it into. And then it has a HDMI output to it, so you can plug it into your TV and you can connect it up with like uh, your uh, 8-bit dog controller and then play through that on your big screen through. Like, so you could play like Pokemon Emerald or Fire, uh, Fire Red Leaf Green on your big screen. But for a content creator like me, having the accessibility for that because you can't yeah, yeah, easily yeah. get like um, a way to without 
using like an emulator to play like the, the Game Boy Advance games and like stream that content for this alone. I was like, I need to get it. And then I can just, especially if they're not bringing it out for the switch, then I could do content on like Pokemon Emerald playthroughs, silver or just, uh, it's just like, it's super exciting, dude. I just think this is like a really cool version, but there's like, I think there's a pre-order. So you have to kind of pre-order it and then it, all the information says at the moment that it's like shipping 2023. So it's like, yeah, I'd wait, wait until it's out. I've already been burned by s- announcements like that already this year. That's what like, talk about. That's what talk about. Okay, <laughs> get too angry. <laughs> yeah, get into it. But yeah, I thought that was quite a nice thing to uh, to talk about and just mention because it was. Uh, I re- I really like it, and I'm I'm obsessing over it in my brain every time now. I'm like, yeah, just I, I want to get one of those. Want to get? Is that how here. much it is? Oh, gonna be. <sighs> it's expensive, mate. It's How expensive, expensive is it? I think with the dock, it's like three hundred dollars. Oh, oh. <laughs> I know that's expensive. I know it's so expensive, oh. right? Yeah, it's could so be worth expensive. it though. I think it would be if Nothing I had. Nothing else like it though, so they've got the captive market. I probably will save up for it, but knowing knowing what will happen is because the the analog don't keep them available forever. So once they're sold out that's kind of it. You're not going to be able to get it again. So you've got to kind of get it when it's available. Otherwise, there's, you you have to pick it up on the second-hand market for like triple the cost, which is just nuts. Yeah. So it's like that. I'm like, let's save up for it. And I know I'll save up for it, right? And then the Switch 2 will come out and I'll be like, ah, I, need, I need to get that. And then I'll miss out on this analog. Bro. So I'm like... We'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Maybe I might win a scratch card or something. I don't buy scratch cards, so it's not going to happen. But, you know, maybe I get given a scratch <laughs> card. I don't want a scratch card, but I don't my buy birthday. scratch cards. <laughs> I get scratch cards in my birthday cards sometimes. Oh, so nice. maybe there's a scratch card and maybe maybe that'll happen. When's your that'll birthday? Good. September. Ah, oh, it's a long time. <laughs> I know, it's so far away. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. But yeah. See what happens. Mm. Maybe I'll buy you a scratch card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not buying scratch cards myself. <laughs> it's a, a slippery slope. I could see it getting really like, I'll be like, ah, be this next one. We'll be the winner. And I'm already 300 quid down. I'm like, could he just, just bought it? Yeah. Bad, yeah. But no, no, very exciting console. So the, the it ha, it is being done. Nintendo could do it. They would be able to make a bunch of money from it and make a lot of like, you know, all the gamers very happy because it wouldn't just be something that has to appeal to a Pokemon market if they were re-release the console in a similar fashion to what Analog have done and just make it really sleek and modern and, and backwards compatible and stuff like that. Then they could release a lot of older titles as well and just kind of coin in on both the uh, Switch online store as well as the re-replicated physical store as well. Yeah. I really want to, I really want this to happen, but I don't I don't see it happening, mate. I don't see it happening. Unfortunately. My stomach just made a weird noise. I wish I hope it's on the recording. I didn't hear it, so it's probably not. Uh, it's not. Damn. But I think that's probably about it this week, mate, unless you've got anything else you want to chip in with. No, I think that's end. pretty much it. it ties out quite nicely. Um we've been running a little bit just over the hour mark, uh, which is yeah. fine, but this is fine. Good amount of time. Sorry. Um, hopefully, yeah. no, it's not your fault. No, we're fine here. We'll just add some of the others. But hopefully next week we'll get some, we'll just get some information about some stuff. I really hope it's not super quiet until like, say, let's say for example, Home does come out on the 19th. I really hope it's not super quiet up until then. I think you're right. I think once uh, Tears of Kingdom drops on Friday, I think hopefully after that we should get some news. Once uh, maybe we might have to wait wait a week or so, but yeah. Hopefully. But we, I think our theory is holding strong for now, so that's the main yeah. thing. It's good, and I think it will. Yeah. Um, oh, and the Walk and Wake event ends this weekend, so the following week we should get a new Spotlight event as well. So they should be returning, which would be nice. So Walk and Wake Iron Leaves will be ending this Sunday and that'll make two weeks of that. So if you haven't got those new Paradox Pokemon, make sure to grab them while you can in-game. Yep. And I'll leave it there, mate. I'll sign it off there. Thank you Let's so much off. to everyone for tuning in again this week. If you are on Spotify, I will just 
do a quick plug just to say if you've got a spare minute or two please just leave us a review let us know we know you're listening on Spotify. we know you're listening we, we no. know you're listening we've seen the numbers you're there just take a minute out of your day just leave a rating. It would really help us if you do. Look at us begging for <laughs> begging. And if you're on YouTube, hop over to Spotify, leave us a rating there. That would be really helpful because you you guys are amazing for tuning in. And I hope you're continuing to like the podcast. No, I love reading the comments. It. It's, it's, and, they're uh, always really nice. So, I think if we continue doing the mailbag every week as well, it keeps that interactive this going between it and i yeah like you say i love reading the comments thank you so much for just taking the time to do them that is more than enough than you need to do um and that will be all from me have a great rest of your week and i will see you next week on the pod and i'm going to l- pass it over to my good co-host scott to sign us off again this week goodbye everybody just do your thing wake up today's gonna be a good day wake up today's gonna be a good day